Batman Bad Blood. Now, this is going to be a spoiler-free review because there are a couple of things in this movie that I think... There are definitely some big deal moments in this movie, and because they're doing um, kind of an actual series of films with like the whole New 52 storyline, there's some stuff that I feel might actually have an effect on some of the later movies that they choose to do, especially continuing along the line of the Batman series, which is basically all they've done. Because uh, I honestly had no idea that this was in the same universe as like the Justice League um, New 52 movie that they did, mostly because, for one, Nightwing was already Nightwing, so I had no idea that they were kind of doing it that way until the ne I saw the trailer for the next movie, which is um, Justice League versus Teen Titans. So if you hadn't seen that, haven't seen that trailer, go check that out, because it, it looks really great, and the animation, of course, is phenomenal. And also, they have the same designs for uh, Beast Boy and uh, Blue Beetle, if you guys watched Young Justice, which odds are you did. They have the same character designs that they had in Young Justice, which is kind of great, but it also made me sad, because when I first saw them, I was like, they're making Young Justice Season 3, and then I was like, oh, it's a movie, but okay. It still should be great, but this movie, I think, was actually really good. It had a couple of great surprises in it. It continues the line. This is, I believe, yeah, this is the third in the Batman New 52 films, and I think they did some pretty awesome stuff in this. We got to see characters that we've never seen animated before um, with the New 52 Batgirl, which I thought was really great because I had no idea that wasn't Barbara Gordon because I just, I don't follow the comics that well. I knew there was, you know, obviously New 52, everything's kind of changed around. But I thought it was still Barbara. I thought they just made her a lesbian in the New 52 universe, but it's a totally different Batgirl, so that was actually really cool. And so we got to see her animated, and... Her whole, every time I saw her, I kept thinking of uh, Batman Beyond because her outfit is black with, like, the red. Um, but she was really cool in this, and I, I kind of like the way they did her story because we get to learn a bit about her and her family. And, you know, because it's the new 52 Batgirl, which most likely, um, you know, you have fans like me where it's like, oh, I know about her, but obviously I had no freaking clue that it wasn't Barbara Gordon, so that says a lot right there. So we get her backstory, which I think is good for a big chunk of this audience that's going to check this movie out. And I thought I liked the way that they did it. It was pretty simple. It's just like, you know, here's her family. This is her backstory. This is how she became Batgirl and stuff like that. So it was really good, and I enjoyed seeing that. We get um, Batwing as a new character. is like the robotic uh, Batman, which I thought was awesome. And he kind of reminded me of Batman Beyond, too, a little bit, but only because he had jet boots. So whenever I see that in a bat suit, I'm like, ah, it just makes me think of Batman Beyond, which I love that so much. But he was really cool, and he's, you know, um, well, I guess I won't spoil it just, in, you know, for people who haven't seen it. I won't say who he is and uh, what character he is, but it was a really fun movie. The action is just as good as it's always been, if not better, because we have so many different fighters in this. We get to see a lot of different combat styles. So we get Batman, we get, you know, Damian Robin, we get Nightwing with his sticks and stuff, we get Batgirl, and we get Batwing, and we, of course, get all the villains that they're fighting in this. And it was really freaking fun. And I really enjoyed what they did with the villains because there were a couple of different twists, and they all kind of came at the exact same time. And so the whole premise is that Batman's dead, no one knows what the heck happened to Bruce, and so we have to have... Dick take over as Batman and for one when I saw the trailer that was one of my favorite things because I've known you know it's one of the things I knew from the comics because that's just such a big deal I knew that he'd taken over for Bruce as Batman in a couple of different uh, situations and I was really excited to see that and I was like that's it's cool that they're finally doing something like that in one of the animated films so that was great to see for the first time you know the new 52 Batgirl Batwing um we got to see a couple of interesting villains in this. It's not really a spoiler or anything, but Firefly is in this. He's one of the villains, which I thought was pretty cool. And there's some other characters and stuff. And like I said, I don't want to get into really any specifics for who you can even expect to fight. But definitely a ton of great action. Um, the twists, I thought, were pretty interesting. One twist... Um, like, the first twist that kind of happens, I thought was really cool. And then the twist right after that... You know, there are basically two right after that... And it's like, huh, that's pretty crazy. So I might be mixing them up, but it's like the reveal of our main villain. Like we seemingly we have like, you know, we have like two main villains in this. And 
so one of them, and this is also in the trailer, I believe, but one of the guys, he's, you know, he's wearing a mask, so you have no idea what he looks like or who he really is. So the reveal of his character was interesting. The re reveal of the main villain behind everything, I didn't expect it to be that character because, you know, they hadn't really shown up. And, and I, I, you know, I just didn't expect them to really show up in this film because I thought it was just going to be, you know, I thought it was all going to focus on Batman being gone and then we just have random villains, but it ends up kind of mattering a little bit who these characters are, at least one of them. Because some of the other twists that they had was just like, holy crap, I could, you know, I couldn't believe they did that with some of the uh, villain characters, and uh, the reveal of the, you know, the first like big bad character I thought was really great. But I felt he was very under, you know, very underutilized as a character throughout this film. It was kind of um, disappointing the way that they used him because it seemed like it would have been way cooler, you know, if they kind of let him just go all out but they really didn't you know let him do that as much as i feel they should have throughout the film but it was still really cool and i, I just like the aspect and the storyline behind it and it does because they're continuing this series and they're making you know starting with you know the new 52 justice league movies that they did they are making this series of films that do stay and have like a permanent lasting effect outside of um, the Justice League Gods and Monsters movie, which was like sort of an alternate universe type of thing, every other movie that I've heard of, at least, I, I really haven't heard of any Justice League or any like DC animated movies outside of the Batman stuff. And there was like one that came out that had like Flash and Arrow because it actually had the actors from the shows. And that I didn't bother watching. A lot of people didn't like how the trailer looked. It did look kind of stupid, but... I think there've only been like two movies that have actually come out that weren't involved in like this DC New 52 animation series that they're doing. So some of the stuff they do in this has a pretty lasting effect on the the future films and what they can and can't do, you know, in later installments. So I'm really looking forward to that. Of course, with it being a Batman movie, it has a clear direct effect on what they can and can't do uh, with the Batman series now, uh, based on what they did in this one. But I think it was a really fun movie. I love getting to see Dick take over for Bruce as Batman. I love getting to see, you know, I think Damien as Robin, getting to see him in animated form I think is really awesome because that was one of my favorite things when they did the first Batman solo movie because it was Son of Batman. And it was like, we get to see Damien Wayne. And then that, you know, that's when they kind of introduced the fact that this is way later. So Dick is already Nightwing. And so we, you know, kind of skip over some of the, I want. I'll say. I'll say typical stuff because everyone knows Batman and Robin, but I feel not nearly enough people know Nightwing and the other Robins and stuff like that. So I was so happy to see them do that for this series, and I think they did a great step uh, developing the characters. Damien, I think they develop pretty in a pretty interesting way. He doesn't have too many like crazy different shifts or anything, but you can see his change from the first movie to this one, and we've had three with Damien, you know, kind of working under Bruce. And I think, you know, we, especially in this one, there's one scene where we get a really clear example of Damien changing as a human being, going from League of Assassins, just killers and Ra's al Ghul and um, Tali al Ghul and all that stuff, to being a part of the Bat family and working under Alfred and Bruce and having this weird relationship with Dick because they kind of just talk at each other and just kind of hate each other all the time which I kind of like because it's it's just not a happy relationship between those two so it's kind of fun and we get some good stuff uh, with Dick in this episode as well or in this movie as well where he talks about how he grew up and what it was like working with Bruce when he was still Robin and then changing and being Robin and going off and doing his own thing and stuff like that so they have some good character moments for sure but I highly recommend this one. Odds are, if you're checking this out, you've already seen it. But if you haven't, definitely go check it out because it's really good. You probably only have like two or three months until the next movie comes out, which I can't wait to freaking see Justice League versus Teen Titans because, for one, we get Justice League versus Teen Titans. And two, we get Teen Titans back, which is really awesome. I know we have Teen Titans Go, but clearly that's for comedy and that's not like action Teen Titans. So I'm looking forward to that, and it is the whole team as well, and just check out the trailer if you haven't. Now, actually, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, if you haven't seen that trailer, I'll just put a link down there. But definitely check out this movie. I highly recommend it. If you have seen it, um, 
you know, I, I want to know what you guys think about it. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. Um, if you're, of course, going to talk about, like, the big things, put, you know, spoiler tags before it. Or you can just jump over to my spoiler-free video, or my spoiler video, and we can just, you can just put all the comments there, you know. And we can talk about, like, the really big stuff and what we think is and is not going to happen in this uh, sort of cinematic universe that they're, you know, making. Because we have, like, three universes now for DC. It's like we have the TV shows, we have the movies, and now we have the DC animated movies which used to just be like, here's a movie about something with somebody, but now that they're kind of going in line, which is really weird, but also very cool, because there's a phone going off. That freaked me out, because there's, there's an office behind me. That's never happened, so that really freaked me out. I'm like, holy crap. But I want to know what you guys thought about this movie, uh, so please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.